Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Easy Achievers Gaming Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Elijah, sitting across from me, as always, Alex. What up? As Alex. How are you? I'm good, man. You good? Yeah. That's good. That's good. Just mm. in case you forgot, Alex. This I always forget. This is the Easy Achievers Gaming Podcast, where we discuss the previous week in gaming, maybe a topic or two, mail it over. If you like our content, please, every Friday... <laughs> Alex is eating chips. Sorry, I'm hungry. <laughs> every Friday over on YouTube and every podcast services you enjoy, we release our sweet, sweet voices out into the ether of the internet. If you like that, give us five stars. Subscribe. If you are new to right now, I want you to put your hand on the mouse. There. That your hand's on the mouse. Scroll all the way down to the bottom mouse. left of the video and hit click. You are now subscribed to the Easy Achievers. Thank you so much. Now, grab the mouse. Pick it up. What throw do it. <laughs> Don't throw it because what if it's connected to your computer? I run you now. <laughs> <laughs> and if you like that little stupid nonsense I just said, hold it over to the patreon.com slash cgachievers. Give us a buck. Helps us out a lot. Shows us that you're supporting us. Oop, the coaster is appearing to Alex's drink and it looks really funny. <laughs> oh, that, that thing's on there. It's not moving. Dude, oh, I put it came my off. cup down. It's on there. That's condensation. Oh, Dude, that's awesome. that was loud. Where was I? Oh, yeah. For, uh, if you're a freeloader, don't worry. We are, too. Please, five stars everywhere. Give us the likes, the the, the five stars. What do, what do we discuss? Androids have five androids. Give us five androids <laughs> on everything. Um, I think SoundCloud has clouds. Give us clouds. <laughs> uh, scream at us on our socials, Twitter, at EVM. That doesn't at Crazy Flip Skater for Miss Alex. Uh, ask questions. We are always free to answer anything, even if I'm at work. I don't care about work. I'll, I'll bust out the phone and tweet yeah, immediately. Yeah, man. <laughs> Let's get into the week. A short preview. Uh, we got a lot today, actually. We got the new PS4 event. Some zombies were found in Red Dead Redemption 2, and Apex Season 3 mm. has been announced, but... Before we get into that, Alex, I have a question. What's up? What you been playing? Borderlands 3. Borderlands. I was kind of trying to do a claptrap thing there, but I No, it didn't work. No. It didn't work. It's a new voice. Yeah. Did you notice? No. No, either. No, it sounded good. I did a little. It's a lie if I said I didn't. I did a little, but I didn't care. I couldn't. I I mean, I don't can't notice really the specifics of that. So, I mean, he sounded like claptrap. Yeah. I love the game so far. Yeah. Brief review. Play co-op. <laughs> Play co-op. I don't like it solo. Solo I'm is a lot more difficult. With you. So I think well, it's not as difficult if you play by yourself the whole way through because I yeah. heard you get overpowered. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's when you start playing with other people that it kind of yeah. If gets you weird. keep going by like back and forth, then it starts becoming an issue. But if you play solo by yourself all the way, you're probably you should fine. Be, yeah, you're fine. Yeah, you're probably fine. Love the game. The game seems to hate me though. Um, I have hard crashed twice. <laughs> I don't know how I have. And I my haven't game done has like crashed, that. I think, three times. Mine has not. Alex, at all? No. The only time is like that. I had one brief moment where, like, I was shooting mm-hmm. one of my ARs and I couldn't hear it. Mm. But then I switched my gun, shoot that one. It was fine, and then then I switched it back, and then it was fine. So it's like things like that. But I think it's because I was connecting to you. So Alex was the main, mm. I guess, hub that I was connecting to him. You're saying, my, so, you're saying, you're saying I made uh, you crash? Yes. It's all you and not the game. <laughs> I think the additive of me trying to connect the entire time yeah. was the reason the game crashed so much. Um, I did see a tweet by Gearbox, the official Borderlands Twitter, saying, we've got all the feedback. We're trying to fix everything same game thing we always hear we'll fix it eventually yeah. so it Hopefully sucks it is a patch then. yeah i love the game i think i love it more because we're playing it together if i played it by myself i don't think i'd like it nearly as much yeah. i honestly i think out of because i've played all uh, all three I th- or four technically i've played one and two all the way through I did I, not play pre sequel. We, well, we started pre sequel. We played. Like oh, we did. We played twenty like minutes. An, <laughs> it was like an hour. <laughs> Maybe but an uh, hour, I yeah. think this so far, this one's the best one. Aside of what, of what I've, I feel like at least. Right. So yeah, I think that's my favorite one. Yeah, I, I, I think it's my favorite one too, because even with the technical issues, I am still coming back to it. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. So I have issues with the technical aspects of it. If you are sensitive to that stuff and you're just like, I don't feel like messing with it. Just wait for wait. the patches. Mm-hmm. It will be patched, I'm sure, within a week, probably. Yep. I hope it gets patched fast. And um, uh, for context, I'm level 31. You're 26. 
26. Okay. Yeah, 26, 27. 26. That's pretty good. So we're really close, actually. Mm -hmm. Um, And we played almost the entire game together. So, yeah. This is purely of a co op review. Like I said, I like it. Yeah. Um, If you don't feel like dealing with issues, um, the writing is good in some parts, uh, boring in some other parts. It's still funny. Yeah, no, it There's, is pretty funny on most yeah, of the parts. Yeah, most most is funny. Some though, it's like this is this is this isn't much. Yeah. Um, but I love the part we just did, which I don't want to spoil it, but it's at Eden Six and it's at the end with a pink uh, teddy bear. That's all I'll say. It's awesome. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and then there's some cool references like they always do. There yeah. was one on Rick and Morty and some other. Yeah, stuff. Yeah, there's so many cool references in that yep. game. You're like, oh, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Again, fun game. But yeah, um, but yeah, good try. It. And that's really all we've been playing. We play, we finished Gears Five yes. by the last time we recorded, and we will actually be recording a spoiler cast after yep. this too. Um, Stay going tuned. much more, uh, much more in depth of it. But we loved it, of course. Um, if you've seen my tweets, you know it's my favorite Gears now. Um, Alex, what what do you t- speak about? I tweeted about it a good bit. Yeah, I saw. Um, I agree. Yep. I, so far, I think this is probably the 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 best. How would you say? I mean, of course, gameplay, but story-wise, is it the best Gears too? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. I still have to meld over because it's been a while since I played three. And, yeah. Um, I know it's better than one. Yeah, they're all really, they're all really. Pretty good. sure it's better than two. Yeah. Three Excellent. is probably the one that. It yeah, goes this one's this one's up there. Yeah, definitely, definitely yeah. up there. It's definitely but, two. But we'll get more into one. that in the next spoiler cast. Yes, of course. I'll have some more time to meld it over. Yep. Alex, we got a we got a story. This is actually a. I don't want to say a counterpoint to what we said a few weeks ago now, mm-hmm. but this is an update to the Call of Duty Modern Warfare debacle of the white phosphorus that we went over. Uh, gotcha. And we didn't really go over it too, too much. We kind of just said white phosphorus yeah. kills a bunch of people. They yeah. were upset because it's in the game as mm-hmm. a kill streak, which makes it sound like it's a reward for killing people. Yeah. People got upset because it's a horrible thing that's happening right now. People, you know, blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah. We said, and this is boiling down to what we said but we said it's a different way of killing people it's all bad so i don't see what's this what's wrong what's with this. Is, that, is that more is that accurate to what we said alex yeah i mean because we, we didn't want to get in too much into depth with it mm. but yeah yeah That's that was different. from people who have never seen war giving their aspect this is a individual from ign this is mr john phipps i believe is how you pronounce yeah, this phipps. is an actual veteran from the marine corps giving his aspect on it. i thought it was very interesting we should bring it up since we went over it um, and this is a very long article that is very good. Please go give it the click on IGN. Very good. Um, give it a full read. You know, you can have a more educated opinion on someone who's actually seen this stuff. Uh, I loved it. I read it all through, and I want to share a few things that are key points, and then me and Alex can still talk about it and see what's up. So this is – I'm going to start off to this. So uh, this is Mr. John Phillips saying, to understand why I think the use of white phosphorus is a problem, we need to talk about war, real war, not the stuff of games. I am a former U.S. Marine. I completed a five-year enlistment, which included multiple deployments in two different theaters of war in support of Iraq, uh, Operation Iraqi Freedom and Operation Enduring Freedom. I've served in multinational environments, bantered with Iraqi merchants, and dined with, uh, uh, I believe Pashtun. that's Pashtun. Thank you. Pashtun farmers. I've walked patrols through Karma, driven through the Yuzbin Valley, manned a 240G in Mahmouda, Mahmouda. Um, it's a uh, Mahmoud, Mahmoud, uh, Yeah, Mahmoud, uh, yeah, and Mahmoud, ran for cover yeah. in Kandahar. Kandahar. Yeah, Kandahar. Kandahar. That last one really sounds like a Star Wars word. I don't want to be mean. What Kandahar? <laughs> yeah, that yeah. sounds like a Star Wars word. Yeah, I don't mean no. that to be. That's funny though. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, no, it's Kandahar. <laughs> yeah, uh, I've watched rounds and packed a foot away from me and fallen asleep with the nods of rocket might kill me before I wake up. I was wounded in action in May 2004 near Falouach. I think I've seen things I can still hardly believe. I have names I'll be looking for whenever we get around to building some memorials. Regardless of the rationale behind the variety of wars throughout the history, there's one commonality they all share. They are all a tragedy. As a Marine, I tried my best to protect myself as a humane professional warrior. No matter who you fight for, your job is to kill the enemy. People were trying to kill me, and I, in turn, was trying to kill them. But I also had no desire for anyone to suffer needlessly. I believe in the laws of war. The battlefield is hellish enough with uh, enough with us already trying our hardest to kill one another. Adherence to the accepted international rules of combat prevent unnecessary suffering, provide guidelines for proportional responses, and define humane treatment of prisoners of war. 
There are two realities in war. You're coming home alive or you're coming home in a box, period. But one of the absolute worst ways to go is being struck by an incendiary weapon. And if you are hit with an incendiary weapon containing white phosphorus, it's even worse. Your end will be slow, agonizing, and torturous. But just what is white phosphorus? Why do I feel so strong about it? Why do I think the specifics around its inclusion in modern warfare isn't as placed? And this is where he gets into what actual white phosphorus is. I'm now going to read that. Why is phosphorus is a material created from the chemical element phosphorus which is used in everyday items ranging from matchbooks to fertilizer. But for purposes of this article, we'll focus on its use in the incendiary weapons. Munitions armed with WP are also used for marking targets and screening movement. But even when not used offensively, the results are the same. A WP weapon detonates, particles stick to the skin and catch fire. The adhesive nature of these particles makes stopping the fire particularly difficult, and they continue to burn until deprived of oxygen or consumed making them among the deadliest incendiary weapons in existence. And it doesn't stop there. As your skin is melting and bubbling, the chemical is absorbed into your body through the burn itself, causing extensive damage to your liver and kidneys, and eventually resulting in total organ failure. Of course, this isn't the only way white phosphorus kills breathing the smoke for an extended period of time. will burn you from the inside as you choke to death. Apologies if this is very uncensored, but that, like, that is what he wrote. I should have uh, put something at the top there. This is very graphic, but I feel like this is necessary to talk about the war game we play. Yeah. White phosphorus isn't something to be taken lightly. Um, and then, like I said, I'm skipping par- portions. This is I did skip a paragraph. This is a little too uh, long to go over the podcast. I don't want to spend the whole, uh, whole podcast on this. I want to... Spend more time on the discussion. Going back to the article. White phosphorus isn't something to be taken lightly. That doesn't inherently mean it has no place in games, as Spec Ops The Line showed us with this brutal depiction of the aftermath of a WP strike. I remember that. Um, weapons like this and the resulting horror they inflict can be handled with nuance and respect for the reality around the weapon itself, as well as our history with it. Spec Ops' lines not only treated WP with gravity and horror, it has also depicted the psychological effect it can have on soldiers responsible for using it when confronted with the results. I believe it's perfectly fine to weave a serious narrative around war in video games, but I find Modern Warfare's use as a killstreak reward as a nearsighted glorification of what myself and others consider to be a violation of the laws of armed conflict. Contrary to their overall goals towards realism in the campaign, a multi component in COD doesn't depict the effect white phosphorus has on the human body in any kind of realistic way. The developer's statement in response to this controversial choice to include a weapon actually cited this as a defense. In real life, you don't take mild damage or stagger away, coughing with impaired vision. You scream in agony and slowly melt away with your organs systematically shutting down. I don't object in things like WP being examined in games, so long as we depict them as truly as a means of causing extremely full, painful, slow, and unnecessarily horrific end to a human life. Other closer rewards such as UAVs, vehicles, radars, and missile strikes are commonplace on the battlefield. I've seen every single one of them and used them in real life. Why Foster was in an entirely different scale. I'm going to end it there. Um, this was interesting to me. I think I even said it in the podcast we reviewed first that I wanted a veteran's perspective on this to mm-hmm. see if they actually cared that why Foster was in, and this is a veteran giving his aspect on the game. Yep. My original opinion, I believe, still stands with an asterisk. I do think the phosphorus should be in a game. And, of course, this gentleman isn't saying it shouldn't be in a game either. It's just uh, they should it's depict just, it. So they how should they, pick uh, it realistically. Yeah. So they shouldn't be like, oh, it's not It's not so, like it's if you use it, it's not like you cough it up and you go. You can be honest, walk away. I didn't know that's what happened to you in the game. I just assume it was like an airstrike and it just blew up and killed you. Yeah. I didn't know you just cough and walk away. Yeah. They, I mean, yeah. If so, they're going to use it, use it. Like, uh, they, they should put it to where like, it, you know, it shows like what it does. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't Unless even maybe know. Maybe that's too, they, 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 I wonder if they didn't do that because it's, it's probably too much. I mean, yeah. Like if you depict that, I guess you yeah, have to show burning I mean, skin. Yeah. So like imagine try much, to right? create that. <laughs> yeah. I, like I said, I Alex is making a mess over here. I I'm conflicted, and like I said, this gentleman isn't saying the game it shouldn't be in the game, and I think it should be in the game if the developers want that. If I don't want it in the game, then I wouldn't buy the game, right? Yeah, that's my basic general statement around it. When we get into the point where this shouldn't be a kill streak reward, is when I'm like, I I we're killing people in this video game quotes right yeah. we're not actually killing people of course these yeah, are yeah. fake people and i think most people understand that these are just 
generated people and we're not actually fighting anybody. Yeah. This is just a means of fighting in a virtual space with no repercussions on shooting somebody. Mm-hmm. I think it's the bare bones. You can put it down. This as a kill streak reward. I don't find that bad again, because there's missile strikes and things like that on there. I, I, I'm not saying those things are equal. I'm just saying both things are heinous in different ways and kill people. Yeah. So I don't mind it as much. I mean, yeah, cause there's other kill streaks on there. That's just as, everyone's bringing up atomic bombs being yeah. the main one yeah there's like like a you nuke. can nuke everyone yeah and i mean like a predator game. missile that's probably easily maybe a two million dollar missile and like some people use it for one person on the, on the yeah. map yeah yeah so there are like unrealistic versions of that too like there's things I, like that it's uh, again i'm conflicted it's like whatever like if they're gonna put it in the game they should probably depict it in a correct way yeah if you if they stick the landing on this whole we're gonna give you white foster as a kill streak. It, I guess it should make sense in the story. I don't mm-hmm. know. I'll. They are obviously keeping this in the game because things like this happen. Yeah, articles are well, made. People yeah, talk cause it, about it. Yeah, it happens. So they're not gonna just be like, oh, it, I'm not gonna, we're not gonna put it. Because I mean, reminds me of Call Two when they did no Russian. Yeah, because right? I mean, they that, could have easily taken before. that out of the game. Yeah, easily could have taken out of the game. And, and they, they did didn't. say there's a certain there's probably scenes in this new one that's that's, that's like as. Russian. Yeah, that's as Which, disturbing as that. I mean, who knows? It could be a, it could be something with white phosphorus. Do you and think they're just not trying to like show it? Do you think they nail this? What do you mean? Do you think you can make a COD two nowadays? I say nowadays. I hate that term. I I mean, do you think they can nail? Because I think, in my opinion, COD two and COD sorry, Modern Warfare two mm-hmm. and Modern Warfare three both nailed what they did. Yeah. I think they gave enough gravity to everything that it made sense and it didn't feel tacked on or misused. The only thing I do not like is no Russian in Modern Warfare 2. Mm-hmm. I don't think it, that did anything. Yeah, because I, I think, think that I mean, was literally just depicting a mow down of just people that added yeah. nothing, in my opinion, other than just, I guess, showing you you're mm. killing a lot of people. I don't know. Well, because, I mean, it, that, that I whole mean, scene it was does show crazy. that, like, I mean, there's terrorists that do do that. But like for that story where it was so going, maybe you're it, supposed to it, you're supposed to like see like I'm not trying to say you should you should experience like what they do or see what happens, yeah, but like you can see but like them you can see them committing the yeah war you're like crime. you're like this does happen, right. but like th- for that story that one was eh. it, I mean you they put it in there maybe I don't know I, for I don't know I, th- I see your point it's villainizing the villains more I yeah. guess is 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 kind of how I see it I guess. Uh, yeah. Was that done correctly? I don't know. I, I yeah. it's been so long now. When I, I remember playing it, and being like, "This isn't fun." I remember being like, "This is a reality." I know me and you mm. experienced nine eleven together. Mm. Not together. Sorry, we both experienced. We 9/11. were alive during the time. Yeah, like, and we know it as an event that happened. Yeah. So maybe that's why they wanted to show it too. Just saying, showing yeah. horrific things like as a reality of war or something. Mm. Um. I don't know. This stuff is interesting to talk about. I love discussions like this because uh, I'll always have a discussion. Yeah. As long as and people were getting really upset because people were people it's, when he made this article. Is there so pe- many different opinions? So yeah, and then people get upset because they're like, "Oh, he's trying to censor him," but of course they didn't really read the article, yeah. and that really goes into deep. So uh, as long as no sem- censorship is done, and I don't even think that's even in the question in this particular instance so i don't even think it's worth bringing up but as long as they believe it should be in the game it should be in the game and if it shouldn't it shouldn't be this is my two cents on it yeah any closing thoughts no just i mean i agree yeah all right moving on oh and if you have any thoughts on that again i love these discussions tweet at us uh hit us up on patreon uh everywhere everywhere yeah instagram anything all uh, right, moving on from that lively, uplifting yeah. story. All right, first, <laughs> Apex, first one of the day, right? <laughs> Apex Legends New Hero Crypto officially announced. Season 3 details revealed. This was the original uh, details that were leaked at that GameStop conference. Mm. Um, this is the full announcement um, over on IGM by Matt Kim. Crypto has been rumored to be Apex new, uh, Next Hero, and today Respawn confirmed um, uh, the next season drops October 1st soon yeah at yeah the end of this month i was about to say is season two even done yet uh it's about to be so it it ends almost as this begins okay so like that, almost so, so okay cool so they're not doing that thing to where no. it's like a week or Same. two like it was like new. two weeks or three yeah. weeks something like that it was 
silly. Cool. Respawn released a new story from the Outlands trailer today that sheds a little light on Crypto's backstory. According to the video, Crypto was just your average middle-mannered hacker who discovered some kind of match rigging a program developed for Apex Legends Torment. <laughs> when a mysterious organization catches on to Crypto, they hunt his friends and family down, forcing Crypto to go on the run. It was oh, a pretty goodness. cool cinematic. I didn't watch all of it, but yeah. it, it, it looked cool. Um, I didn't have time to watch all of it. Uh, crypto. Oh, he's in the map already. What is it? But that's cool. So Crypto is already technically in Apex Legends. Players can find Crypto loitering around the map, hacking into servers before running away. Oh, wow. And then um, they have a video embedded in him, and you can see him running around in the video. That's cool. Oh, okay. That's cool. I like that they're adding these uh, event-like things yeah. happening. That's that's cool. Uh, again, expect all that stuck to October Cameos 1st. I'm way. sure they'll change the map a little bit, too. Um, the the season is called Meltdown. Mm. And, of course, it will be do a new battle pass and that new charge rifle we saw and, of course, a new ranked season. Mm-hmm. Exciting. You going to uh, come back to Apex for this? Yeah. Yeah, I will, too. I mean, I, want, I, I wanted to play this one. At, uh, I just didn't get a chance to play it as much as I wanted to. I mean, mm-hmm. even with Fortnite, I was I wanted, I, I liked this season, but mm-hmm. I just didn't get a chance to play it as yeah, much. Yeah, yeah, too much games, right? Too yeah. many games. Yeah, too many. too many games. Yep. Moving on. This is an interesting story, I feel. YouTube overhauls its problematic verification program. This is over on the MSN because no one else wrote up about it um mm-hmm. and this is tech crunch uh, technically under msn that that makes tech crunch so uh, this is by sarah Perez. youtube's verification program is getting a massive overhaul the company announced today which will likely result in a number of less prominent creators losing their verification status i do not agree with that sentence previously youtube allowed any channel that reached 100,000 subscribers to request verification that limit is being removed with a change to its verification program that rolls out in late october Going forward, YouTube will focus its efforts on verifying channels that have more of a need to prove their authenticity, like those belonging to a brand, a public figure, artist, or another creator who might be subject to impersonation, for example. Um, YouTube says the earlier verification was established when the site was smaller, but its ecosystem has since grown and become more complex. Instead of looking at a number of subscribers, a metric that can be gamed by bots, the new system will uh, have more murky requirements. I'm going to put a little aside. Alex, we need to get these bots to help us out. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, obviously, right? (laughs) YouTube says it's about prominence, quote, quote, prominence, end quote which is defines it in a number of ways. For starters, YouTube will determine if a channel represents a well-known or highly searched for creator, artist, public figure, or company. We'll also consider its... If the channel is widely recognized outside of YouTube and has a strong online presence, or if it's a channel that is very similar in name to many other channels. We understand YouTube will use a combination of human correction and algorithmic signals to make these determinations when asked. The company declined to discuss the specifics, however. Interesting that they declined to comment. I'm going to end it there because it just goes into much more numbers and all that stuff. Uh, uh so my Twitter feed has been alight with everyone losing verification status. Mm. Most people mm-hmm. pretty prominent enough to not lose verification status. I understand they wanted to take away the 100,000 subscriber thing to request verification. Yeah. It sounds like they're just making it to where the important people get it. Yeah. I It, it seems to me anyways, right? I, and we'll see in the coming weeks, I'm sure, that maybe these people just need to request again and then they'll get, and they'll get it back. But uh, YouTube is getting pickier and pickier as the days go on. So it looks like most likely they're keeping with this thing and they're just going to worry about the people they need to worry about, i.e. Mm. if you're famous. I mean, late th- there is a lot of people on YouTube, so I mean. Right. But why take away the verification that proves you're a person? Now, 100,000, oh, yeah, yeah. if that's the problem, the mm-hmm. 100,000 thing, make it something else. Make it to where you have to prove that you're an actual person. Yeah, because I mean. The only thing with this is. Why isn't not everybody can get a hundred thousand? <laughs> it's not even that. It's it's with the verification process. Verification processes should be used to make sure people are real people. Yeah. So we know who are bots and who aren't. The reason verification should exist not because you're famous, <laughs> but because you it proves you're a real person on Twitter and not a bot or yeah. some alt account making fun of somebody. If I could be verified on Twitter, like that would be amazing. Because it makes it to where people know you're real. You know what I mean? Yeah. Without that, there's a dissonance, I feel. Especially if you don't have an actual profile picture, with many people don't, with their anime avatars and all this yeah. stuff. I feel like verification should be handled across the board on Twitter, YouTube, uh, Facebook, Instagram. All these things should be just made to where you show your driver's license 
and you prove you're real, and yeah. then that's it. You prove you're a person. You can only use it on one account. If you are, you'd have to prove that you're a company on something else. Like, for instance, us, we'd have to prove mm-hmm. we're Easy Achievers as a company or whatever. Yeah. Stuff like that. That was my two cents. I want to rant a little bit. Alex, do you have I any see. closing thoughts? No. No? I've always been upset about this. Yeah. Where I verification see. is this, you have to be famous to get it. Like, why isn't it used to weed out the the bots and the, the Dude, troll people? Yeah. Like, why is it, I don't Yeah. I'm nobody, so what do I know? <laughs> Let's go to something that's more exciting. E3 2020 pitch pro- proposes overhaul with Qtainment, new four plan, industry only day. This is by Mac Feuder over on Game Daily about Biz. The ESA is hoping to turn E3 into a Gamescom-like festival, and in addition, 10,000 consumers may pack the LA Convention Center. The ESA is trying to rebrand ESA. Uh, <coughs> sorry, let me start over. The ESA is trying to rebrand E3 as a fan, media, and influence festival for next year's event. In a pitch deck intended for lobbying group members, uh, the ESA says it has plans to adapt its offering in response to feedback gathered from publishers. As part of its overhaul, the group proposes leaning into influencers and paid celebrity deals with talent representation agencies like UTA and CAA. The deck includes two examples of these high-profile celebrity activations, including members of the Los Angeles Lakers playing a basketball video game in front of fans or actors competing in a tournament. These attractions rely on a massive change to the E3 show floor. The presentation includes a sample of what the LA Convention Center's West Hall might look like with eight experience hubs in the middle of traditional booths. Um, and there's a floor plan in this article. It looks very interesting. There is yeah. literally... I'm going to get into this at the end, but it's a very Disney World, Disneyland-esque. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, the lobbying group says it, it hopes to create exclusive appointment-only activations for a select attendees who will create buzz and FOMO. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is, a, um, that is a marketing sentence if I've ever seen one. ESA members sh- shot down the idea of paying celebrities, though, according to three slides labeled member decision points. Okay. celebrities will be invited through an organized program instead industry attendees including media should be aware that esa membership approved an additional 10,000 gamer badge attendees bringing the total number of consumers on the show floor to 25,000 the e3 me. schedule may be reconfigured with an industry only day on tuesday to just the first day of e3 activities on the la convention center before opening the doors wide open to ticketed members of the general public on wednesday and thursday even with an additional 10,000 people, E3 won't close to the largest industry events around the world. With fortuitous timing, Nyko Partners senior analyst, oh, Daniel Ahmed, I follow him on Twitter, he's awesome, shared the following attendance statistic for major conventions this year. And this is interesting, I'm actually going to go over this. So, Gamescom 2019 had an attendance of uh, 373,000. China Joe 2019 had 365,000. Brazil Game Shows 2018, 325,000. Tapay Game Show 2019, 320,000. Paris Games Week, 2018, 316,000. Tokyo Game Show 2019, 262,000. G-Star, Cor- uh, G-Star Korea 2018, 235,000. E3 2019 at a 66,000. 66, Interesting. Whoa. So they are not getting people in. It's more of a trade show like... Yeah. Tra- tr- trade show slash... Uh, an advertisement show, I assume. Yeah. So maybe it's, they don't actually need people there. I mean, they're obviously making money. They keep coming back. Yeah, it's just crazy because you would think E three, you would have the maybe like five hundred grand, right. five hundred thousand people. Well, the biggest things right are the conferences, and the conferences aren't mm-hmm. actually in E three most of the time. That's they're good in, point. Yeah. They're offsite, and like for instance, Microsoft is in their Microsoft Theater that is huge. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, because I, I was right. looking at the the floor plan. Let's go back to that floor plan. And the, uh, the, 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 that's about everything. Um, oh, this is actually a much longer article than I thought, but that's everything we'll go over. Um, there's maybe some other things we'll see at the end, but I want to go back to this. Like, uh, you go, you like, go like, look at this floor plan. Mm-hmm. Um, for anybody who uh, can't Audio see listeners. it. Yeah, for anybody who can't see it. It's just Everyone like, can't uh, see it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah good point. Yeah, good point. <laughs> West, uh, it says West Lobby, Groundworks, Galaxy. Okay, so it's, it's the West Hall. Um, yes, the West Hall. So not the red one, just but the one on the We've never been here, so we're just going off maps. Yeah. There's, it says Nintendo of America right there in the middle. It's like the biggest one. But oh, if yeah. you look around, I don't see Sony or Xbox anywhere. So I don't know how Microsoft. this works, i am be honest, but I'm pretty sure there are different <clears throat> spots. So I don't like think, this the, whole, this I whole think there's different just, halls. Own, okay. 
So this is I don't just know. Long. Okay. I'm just saying I think that's how it works. Okay. It's just yeah, because but I'm, yeah, I see what you're saying. Nintendo in this huge bracket, and then there, on the top right corner they have two slots in here. They yeah. have yeah, they have yeah. two big slots, and then there's Oculus, E E3 Sports, Sega. Sega has a big one, surprisingly. But then there's one that there's three that says reserved that doesn't say names. Interesting. Yeah, but, so, Interesting. but yeah, the Sony or Microsoft they're not over here. I mean, there's some other ones I can. But so they are, you're probably right that there is some probably other a hall. I'm assuming somewhere. there's a different hall. <clears throat> and I know Microsoft is off-site having yeah. their thing. EA didn't come this year. They had their own EA Play thing, <clears throat> all that stuff. What do you think of this? Is this E3 trying to stay, quote, relevant? Do you think they're in any problem of not coming back? Do you think they are making enough money? What, I, I think they're they're... They're noticing that there's not them. There's it's not staying as big as as it has it's been. Right. Not so. As every, so people are going to more trade shows like PAX and Ga- Gamescom. Like they're going to those more than E3 lately. So I feel like they're just trying to like rebrand in a way. So, um, I think it's interesting that we still and it seems like it <clears throat> nothing ever happened to about it. But remember, E3 doxed everybody. Yeah. Not purposely, but they everyone has all of everyone who wants information now. Yeah. And it seems like everyone forgot about that. No offense to the people who that happened. That, of course, is a terrible thing that it happened. And yeah. I do not wish that on anybody. That's everyone's <laughs> private information that's now in, in, in the internet. Yeah. But it seems like no one cares now. No. They were saying, they said they were going to sue. It was a class action lawsuit, which they should have. I believe they should have. Mm. They should have sued them. But. It doesn't look like anyone's doing anything anymore. Yeah, I think and they did say no one's going back to E3. That's what the, that's what some people said. They said. Oh, I'm never going back. Okay, well, I'll be on the lookout. I'm not calling anyone out, of course. I'm not that kind of guy. I'm well, just curious how, if how anyone about, will actually do that. Don't worry about them. Give us passes. No, we'll there we we'll go. Come. Alex will we'll go ahead and sure. pimp our stuff. We'll come. Yeah, man. We'll, we'll sell our information for you. We'll come. We'll do it ourselves. Is that what it takes? E- ESA. Up. I will. I will dox myself right now. I live. <laughs> I will. I will put an E3 brand decal on my car and be like, "I'm going. Go here too. <laughs> you should come too." All right. Yeah. I guess. I mean, that, just to get more people. If you guys don't know, Alex's car, huge thing in our community. <laughs> Everyone yeah, right? comes every week to see what's my, on. My, what's his new my small silver hatchback car. <laughs> Oh, I think we got as much of that story as we're going to get yes, <laughs> moving yeah. on to Eurogamer. This is by a Matt Walls. Bioware ditching Anthem's original post-launch content plans to focus on, quote, core issues. This is still going. Following the much-delayed release of Anthem's Cataclysm update last month, Bioware said it will be ditching its original announced post-launch content plans and wound up delivering seasonal updates in place of its planned regular acts in order to focus on mm. core issues. Mm. Um, that's really it. I don't really need to go over anything are else. Are people this still is... playing Anthem? I assume so. Like, no offense to the people I... that are playing Anthem, of course. but I'm like, well, look, it's new. There's five people playing Anthem, so technically people are still playing Anthem. <laughs> I mean, there's still people playing Modern Warfare for three, but... Yeah. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Do you think they stick with this, or is this game dead? I feel like this game's dead. I think they come I've back heard to it in nothing a year. since we've last played it, since now. I think they turtle shell and then re-release the game. Do you understand what I mean? Do you no think Man's Sky like? Oh, you mean like a new patch update type of thing? I'm talking like they rebranded as a different game. Like Anthem, quote this, mm. similar to No Man's Sky Beyond. Yeah, you know how they came. No, No so Man's like Sky Anthem next. colon Catalyst or whatever, or whatever his thing. Whatever was. they would, and they they try to make it as a new thing and so get people back. Can come back and be like, look, we fixed all the things that were wrong with it, like the story and everything else. You can go to a whole new planet. <laughs> yeah, there's a planet now. No, well, no, that kind of break the game, right? Because you were supposed to be on the chaos planet or something. I guess. Yeah. God, you can tell know. we don't remember anything about that game. Moving on because that ain't going much else. We got the Game Awards uh, date. Ooh. Save the date by Jeff Keighley himself yeah. over on his Twitter page in three months. December 12th, 2019 Dude. Games Award is live from Los Angeles at the Microsoft Center, Microsoft Theater is what MS, I assume that is. Yeah, MS Theater. I assume that's what it is. Can't wait to tell you more about our fifth anniversary celebrations. And tickets are now on sale if you want to go. Very cool. Let's go. Very cool. Oh, you want to go? I wish. Yeah, sure. Let's do it. <laughs> I'll drop one. I'll, I'll go ahead and email Jeff Keighley. Hey, buddy. 
pretend like I know him. Buddy old pal. Yeah. Hey, man, you remember me? He's like, because uh, then you get in that weird circumstance where you're like, yeah. <laughs> I can see this right now. You walk up to him. You go like, hey, man, you, you remember me? All I see is like two big body, uh, like bodybuilders, security guys. Go, I got him. <laughs> All you see is you getting tackled by both of them. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, very much. He's they wouldn't president. let me near him. They wouldn't let me near him. This is a nice story. Yeah. Super Smash Brothers Ultimate was final mission from late Nintendo president Iwata. If you guys don't remember, Mr. Iwata son did pass away a few years ago. Oh, no. Um, right after, uh, it was a little bit after the Switch launch. Um, I'll read this article. This is by Geek.com um, by Jordan Minor. Super Smash Brothers Ultimate more than lives up to its name. The crossover fighter packs every character from the series' history. Characters that span the entire video game industry from Nintendo, Sega, Capcom, Square Enix, Konami, and even Microsoft. They forgot Sony. Uh, and along with paid DLC characters, the game has fleshed itself with new modes. But why is the game so big? We're not complaining. We're just curious. I always figured the team uh, rightfully recognized that the Nintendo Switch popularity could allow for a much greater success. The sales figures be- uh, bear that out. However, the actual answer may be much more heartwarming if bittersweet. Uh, Sakurai at the Game Awards. He uh, There was a Game Awards. I'm not sure which specific Game Awards this was. Um, uh, but I'm sorry for bringing up this personal story at this time like this. But making Smash Brothers on Switch was the last mission the late... Uh, uh, I forget how to pronounce his first name. Saruru? Uh, uh, Iwata-san, I believe is how you pronounce it. Gave to me. I put my all into the game. And with more DLC, I will continue to work hard. Which is a really, really nice thing. Satoru. Satoru, thank you. That is correct. Satoru you are. I have to look at the word, the name for a yeah. second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that is awesome. The, that was the Tokyo Game Show. That's right. And the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate took many awards home. Um, That was just a nice story. Mm-hmm. Last mission he gave him, and he's one to put his all into this project. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, I'm curious if they keep this Smash forever. Yeah, because we were listening to a thing uh, or read something the other day saying something. They're asking if this is going to be the last Smash. Or if they, I think they've asked that every time a Smash has come out. Like, is <laughs> yeah, this the last point. Smash? Because like it gets unbelievable at a point. It's like, do we keep getting these things yeah, until like, it ends? Like, who else can you add? After a point where it's like, really, how do who? Uh, of course, the answer is Sora. Of course, yeah. that's the only answer. Yeah. But we are in that point where it's like, who do you add? And this new fighter pass will answer that. Who they'll figure out somebody that. Yeah, because they said even after those five people, there's still gonna be more, right? I remember they did it down that. So the original pack, the, yeah, they announced it in yeah. the direct, and then now there's a new pack, yeah. So yeah, you're, yeah. Okay. If you're talking about the original five, then yes. Yeah. Okay. Interesting, awesome, and I love it. Mm-hmm. I love. It. I want more Smash. If they hopefully they keep the Smash because if they re-release Smash, I assume they will lose characters, and I want this to be the uh, t- t- the biggest Smash ever, and hopefully this can kind yeah. of just become. A history piece that follows us. I haven't played Smash in a while. I need to go back to it. Yeah, we can play some Smash. I'll buy the DLC. Um, this was just an interesting thing that I saw, and I don't think anything will ever come of it. But this is the gentleman from earlier, Daniel Ahmad, that uh, Twitter account I follow. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. A patent for the new gaming controllers were filed by Razer recently. Essentially, they are Joy-Cons that connect to a dedicated gaming device or tablet via a magnetic system, as opposed to a rail system like on the Switch. Many people were quick to point out that this is a Switch clone, and there are pictures, of course. Literally, picture a Switch. Picture it black and green. Boom. You have what we're looking at right now. <laughs> Um, th- again, this is a patent. This could never go anything. They could just be R&Ding some things just to see what they could do. But it's a cool thing to theorize. Be like, oh, maybe one day they'll actually make this. Uh, what mm-hmm. do you think, Alex? Is this something you think will actually happen? Or is this just something that is... It's interesting. Oh, and this was a follow-up. Razer has responded and said this was the first to market with... the. Pe- uh, sorry. Razer has responded and said that it was... First to market with detachable controllers for a tablet gaming device in 2013 with the Razer Edge Pro game controllers. Mm. So they are technically correct that they are the first, so they're not copying anyone. I guess that was important for them to say. <laughs> like, hey, whoa, whoa, this Nintendo copied us, all right? <laughs> looks, looks, it looks cool. looks cool. I mean, if they made I like how it. There's a picture of uh, Division 2 on one of them. And Fortnite is the other one, yeah. yeah. Interesting. But I'm like, really? Division 2? I mean, it's that? the stock That's photo. It's I wonder if it's not possible. real. What, Pan for on a handheld? Product, product, uh, do you th- <laughs> for instance, if this came out, do you think this would even be... I the, think it's, would I, you put games in this, or would you just... Your PC plays it and you stream it? Uh, 
I think it'll be connected to your Steam. Because there's no Steam. way this thing plays. So I think it's going to be. Its, it's, I think it's going to have its own OS. Mm. And I think it's going to have. Uh, it's going to be connected to like Steam or You're something. You're using future tense. You think this is real? Like, sorry, this is real. I think it do can be. Do you think be. it will make? I think it can. I think it can be. Yeah. I think they would do it. I don't think. I mean, they, they will have the Razer it. phone. Yeah, that's true. They made the Razer phone, and then they did Razer. Phone Everyone two. listening to this podcast just went. There's a Razer phone. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, there's the, actually the second one came out already. Yeah, Alex is the only, the only reason I know that is because Alex showed me once, and yeah. I was like, okay. Yeah, no. Um, I knew somebody who had one. He showed it to me. It then looks nice. Like um, I, I like it. I'm good with my iPhone. I mean, you have an iPhone. Though. Yeah, I'm good. You're gonna with get that. that iPhone 11. Uh, yeah, because I'm super rich, Alex. Yes, yeah, yeah. I will make sure to buy that. Yeah, man, give me no. Next. I'm definitely not doing that. <laughs> this is an interesting story, and I wanted to go over with you just to get your thoughts on this. Mm. This is over yeah. on PC Gamer by Andy Chalk. Mm. Twitch streamer suspended for Chun Li cosplay. Qco said her account was suspended for three days for violating rules about sexually suggestive content. All right. Twitch has temporarily suspended the account of streamer Qco for violating its guidelines on sexually suggestive content or activities. The suspension arose following a weekend stream during which she was cosplaying a Street Fighter stalwart Chun Li. As noted by Kotaku, as noted by Kotaku, and even by even casual Street Fighter fans, the outfit includes a thigh high slit. But Kuko told the site that she bought one size up to ensure that the slit wasn't too high, end quote. Uh, Kuko also told Kotaku that the suspension was due to, quote, a group of trolls, end quote, who had been repeatedly talking her for mass reports. Quote, I am immediately reported because I've been branded a thought, end quote, she said. Kuko was previously banned in August for dressed as Kings of Fighter character Mai Shiranu, which she said was also the result of a targeted online campaign to report her by members of of the live stream fail subreddit a live stream fail moderator denied any connection to the most recent stream but according to Tucker, one member of the group wrote in a since deleted post quote lmao saw her streaming again today and instantly reported the thought end quote there's nothing wrong with it so just for context of you guys maybe you're like okay she's is she cosplaying as Chun Li, or is she wink, wink, cosplaying as Chun Li? You know what I'm Literally, saying? She's saying she's Chun Li and she's like, naked. She, no. She's wearing the dress, and at worst, you can see her upper thigh. That's it. Ooh. So, oh, it's some leg. <laughs> so, what I'm assuming has happened is true with the group of trolls just immediately reporting her, and I'm assuming no person saw this happen. No, yeah. no Twitch employee came and said, "Yep, that's that's report. Boom, suspended." I think a bunch of algorithms said, oh, this person got reported t- 10 times in the last 30 minutes. Mm. Must be wrong and, and just suspended her. I mean, I've seen uh, people I've seen now, people in streams. Like, let's <sighs> teleport. Okay. Time travel, if you will, All with right. me, Alex, to All last right. week yep. where we went over a Mr. Tifu yep. who dropped the N-bomb on stream. Yep. Is that, Alex, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look over for a second. Alex... I don't see. Is it in the? Di- it, oh no, he's still on. He's still on Twitch, and he hasn't been banned at all. <laughs> what? Okay, so I. I can. Hey. I'm literally looking at the picture right now of uh, uh, Kuko. Yeah. Nothing wrong with it. Like you can barely even see her legs because it's almost covered. And just just for reference, like you can her see not even her knee. Is, is, it's just her thigh, and like yeah, yeah, you can see her thigh, and then her arms are pretty much covering you know that, that little crease where your thigh hits your, yeah your, she is uh, covering shirt. everything there yeah, is so no... you're, you, i mean nothing's on her chest like but, and, every, and to be sure it's neck up yeah it goes to her neck like there is like, no, there's no cleavage cleavage at all period like, like it's it's zero. fine it's just leg it's like it's like <laughs> girls wearing booty shorts will go into the stores it's like not even that yeah it's, i would say that's it's more like, revealing than this yeah like it's what's, what this is very interesting because we're in a weird space. So am Twitch I? So if will... I start streaming, <laughs> please finish if I, this thought. <laughs> if I if I start streaming, uh huh, and if if we get more subscribers, mm-hmm. I would do this. Wear a Chun Li outfit. Am I gonna get banned? You know, your dude, huh? Your dude. No, you won't. It won't happen. Then that's Guaranteed. sexist. <laughs> yeah, a hundred percent. I a hundred percent agree with you. Yeah, that won't happen. Because we're a bunch of dudes that look like idiots. Everyone who outfits. wants to see this and and, and like to see if it happens, <laughs> subscribe to us. Subscribe if and we, get, if, if we, we get to <laughs> just, 
if we get to a hundred dollars in Patreon, fifty bucks on Patreon, yep. I'll do it. How much is a Chun Li outfit? Probably fifty bucks. Fifty eBay. bucks. There we go. <laughs> 50 bucks. I'll get whatever size if up get, over my we, normal would be and see what happens. If we get fifty, hundred bucks, whatever on Patreon, I don't know. Whatever it costs for the Chun Li outfit, I will with Alex cosplay as <laughs> Chun Li and we'll do a stream or whatever. And I will tweet at Chuko. I'm sorry that. There's a bunch of silly people at Twitch yep. that find it nest. Look, I get it. They have algorithms that probably automatically do this stuff. They yeah. should have immediately saw this, that someone got banned, and a person should have seen it and looked yeah. and see if it was justified. I just don't understand, like, why instead of, like, oh, there's some reports going on. Let's see. Let's go check. Let's go check it out and see what's Give, going on. Instead, here, no. Here, I got just a crazy. I, and, guys, stick with me. It's a joke. I got to stick with me. You do a stream. Okay. Chun Li outfit. All right. I do a second stream, uh-huh. and I just say racial slurs until I get, see who gets banned. See who gets banned first. <laughs> oh my god, this is silly stuff. And are these I'm bo- so okay. sorry, Chuka. You had to go through that. Okay, sorry, not Chuka. Cuco, she's, sorry. She, okay, Cuco. she is on Twitch. Okay. Yeah, Twitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah Twitch. Twitch. Um, it's. Mm. I'm not gonna say anything else. <laughs> very interesting. Again, sorry, Cuco. You had to go through this silly, yep. silly stuff because a bunch of people just got upset and wanted to get, and wanted to get under your skin. Go to Mixer, see what happens there. There you go, Mixer, yeah. Microsoft will take your weird stuff. They've said yeah, that before. Hey, just stream there and see what happens. If yeah. They, yeah. Make anyway. it a big deal. Good moving on. Last week, Alex, we went over that on the 24th of September, there will be a Last of Us event. Mm? PlayStation Today also said on the same day, there's going to be a state of play. Oh, man. A state of play on the same day of a Last of Us 2 event. I we think we're getting release we're day? working we're getting a release date. We're working oil. There's grease happening. We're chucking. I can feel it. We're getting a release date for sure. I think that's oh, the God, easy yeah. thing to say. You think we're gonna get a new story trailer? Uh, for sure. Okay. We're seeing oh, do Joel. You, okay, I was about to say you think we're gonna see Joel? I think so. Okay. I'm going you know what? I got my theorist hat on. Let's get nuts. What do we see for real? For real, like I th- what do you think we see at this? I think aside from they're other either new gonna, games we don't know about. Maybe they're not going to show that same... You remember that first scene where they showed her playing the guitar and then Joel's... The back of his head or whatever? They they maybe show that again, but maybe the other way. So they'll show his face or just a quick glimpse. So like, let's say you just see him walking in. What are you doing, kiddo? And you see his face and then it goes to like another cutscene or something with them, both of them. I don't think that'll happen. I think we're getting a Joel segment. Just a Joel. Something he's doing. Because mm, we like haven't it. seen him at... Oh, well, maybe that's the point. I just that don't makes know. me rethink everything, though. Yeah, the two things can happen. We get a we, full Joel period. Mm-hmm. See what happens. See what he looks like old because he has to be older now, right? Uh, it's it's boo. It's, it's been four been years, right? More, four, more. Oh no, I, she's twenty three. Is she twenty? So, she, I mean, she's in her twenties. Is she? I thought she was eighteen. Oh, that uh, being that. Okay, me. yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. what I'm doing. We got to keep it with that. Um. Uh, uh, back to that. I think we're getting more. We're getting a salt and pepper Joel. Uh, you know, salt little, and pepper Joel. Yeah, guy. we're getting I salt like and it. pepper Joel. We're getting. Salt, he's coming out. We're getting either a standalone segment or him with him with her. If we're not, mm-hmm. we might not even get gameplay. If they really want to uh, mess with us, they'll just give us a little story trailer, the date, and then see you then. Now. We get well, let's go over this first and then we'll okay. go over what we think of the date. Yeah, yeah. If we get this Joel thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, sorry, if we don't get this Joel thing, we probably get generic Last of Us thing where it's like she we see some really cool story stuff and then we go to her mercilessly like mercilessly killing people. Just like the last trailer. I mm-hmm. don't think they'll do that. I think we're getting something very different. Why does nobody want to tell me her age? We probably don't know. I, we probably don't know how long it's been. I'm I'll saying she's out. at least 20. Probably airing on 22. Joel did they was say, 36. Did they, did they say how oh, old Did they know. say how old he was or how old she was in the first game? Yes, cuz she old, has a birthday. How old was she? I don't remember. 16, uh, 15. I I thought she was 13. No, was she? No. How old? She was uh, She was really? older than 13 for sure. And I would say she's probably fifteen. I that sounds more right. Oh, uh, oh, okay. Uh, here we go. Uh, mm, it says 
A 19-year-old survivor, Ellie has matured beyond her years. Okay, so Last of Us Part 2 has to be... She's 19. Ellie okay. is a... Dur- a Deuterogenous? And Last of Us playable protagonist. And uh, yeah. Okay, so in the new one, she's 19. The last one... Uh, that's what I'm trying to think. It's not telling me. But at least we know she's 19 in the new one. Okay. Yeah. So we we know she's 19 then. I thought she'd be a little oh, older. Oh, 14. So I was I was close. I 14. said 13. Got it. Okay. Yeah. And you said so 15. So it's been five years. Yeah. So, okay. So it's been five years from that point to this point. Yeah. So it's been five years. So he's probably 40 something. Mm-hmm. Um, we, yeah, like I said, salt and pepper Joel, all that stuff. I yeah. think we see him finally. Yep. Um, any closing thoughts on Last of Us? God, I can't any wait. Any more theory? I can't wait either. What's the date? <sighs> we, 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 I want to go over the date now. What do you think the date is? It Okay. It's either the, the last week of February or that first week of March. Okay. So between those two I weeks. I can see that. So it's like... God of War was the first week of March, if I remember correctly. Mm-hmm. No? Uh, God week? of War was April 26th. Is it April? April 26th. <sighs> Yeah, I can see that. It's 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 definitely before the end of the fiscal year. Mm-hmm. So it has to be before March, right? Isn't it? No, no, April. April 15th, I think, or something like that. Anyways, very interested to see where this goes and I like I think I agree with you actually. It's last week April, first week March. Yeah. Um, very interested to see that. Moving to the actual PlayStation event itself, mm-hmm. what do we see there? Do you have any? I think we'll see. Do a, you think we see next gen? What do you mean? Caught you off guard, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, you did. No, you, you won't see nothing. It. No, not even. You'll see it next year. I think we'll see a teaser for next gen. And I'm talking about like, teaser. Like, you like, have teasers like like what Xbox, Xbox. did. Like just like a, they talk about it. Xbox. No, they just really. I don't think so. Okay. Yeah. I. I, I if we do, okay, if we if we see if anything, we do, if they'll do it at Game Awards. If we do, mm, no, no, not forget no no. They, or they, PSX, they make excuse you, me, PSX. Aren't we having a PSX? So this in this event, I, if we don't see oh, or we'll if see we, more at PSX. If we don't see the teaser, okay, they are announcing PSX in this. Yeah, we will then see it. Yeah. At PSX. Yeah, because they'll, they'll be like, oh, you guys will see next gen. Everybody's gonna go next, and then they're gonna be like, well, we'll see you at PSX. Yep, and that's it. Yep. And then and they, agree they that announced one. that PXS is coming back because, again, it didn't come back last year. Yep. So it comes back this year. Yep. They show off n- next gen. They don't say that, of course. They just say, come pre prepared for our mm-hmm. next gen plans. Yep. <sighs> or it'll show like a glimpse Alex, of like. This is when it starts. Do they like PS5 or the. Uh, I'm, I'm going to pretend like I'm uh, Jubilee with the little sparkles. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's firing up. <laughs> now, okay. Let's do another another one. Okay. If they do another show it, one. if they do it, at, if they do show it at PSX. Mm hmm. Will they reveal the name? Yes. Yeah. I, th- I think I th- full I think reveal. So. I think so too. I think I they'll think reveal the name. I think they'll. Re- uh, Sorry. So if not they full do, reveal, like not not with specs. I think it's if just they what re- it looks if like. they reveal it, I feel like they're gonna reveal the name because they will. Own and it says now or development or whatever, and it'll be and it says holiday twenty twenty. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. They will own the end of the year if they do that. They will own conversation for the full end oh, of the God, year yeah. if they do a f- not full reveal, but if they show off what it looks like, like the, the name and the name, yeah, not the full specs, of course. Yeah, because I mean, it's gonna be like yeah, because yeah, I mean, stuff. Xbox did that little teaser trailer, but they didn't even give the real name yet because they couldn't. They yeah. can't. Yeah. Yeah, they probably don't even know what the name is. Probably, probably not. like, is it is it gonna be Xbox fifty four like, or is it gonna be Xbox four? Is it? <laughs> <laughs> they're like, we have Project Scorpio and Scarlet. <laughs> what should we name it now? Red. Shut up, Jan. <laughs> yeah. Interest, interesting. And by the way, we're Xbox fans. <laughs> so we should know. Yeah. Um, I'm excited. This That's is the, the time 20th. to be excited, man. Yes. We're fi- next gen's firing up. The the train's going to slowly start rolling. Um, Mr. Adam Bankhurst, his Twitter actually, he tweeted out. Um, uh, I knew the they mentioned there are no talks about next gen plans, but it's pretty interesting that the end of the video shows five stragglers getting in line. So they did a little mm. uh, video saying that it's coming out, and it's basically people running to form nine two four nineteen. Oh, and at the very end of this little video, it's like a short twenty second video. Yeah, yeah. There, at the it. end, there's five people coming into the line. At the very end. Interesting. And Inter- like. 
subtle One, things like two, that three, aren't four, five. Yep. subtle things like that aren't done accidentally and see like, playstation's good like, with that stuff on purpose they've done this before haven't they like things like that like hidden i'm sure they have i'm sure they have yeah because that was get, that was fine get get the cork board out we gotta form theories a cork board. <laughs> did you mean a whiteboard <laughs> no a cork board but those hurt Cork you boards get, hurt. You get, I mean, you, you have, to have thumbtacks. Yeah, thumbtacks. Thumbtacks hurt, man. But what if they fall? You Are we don't stabbing they fall? each other well, with it? I'm not. Because you know, we're sometimes not fighting. Have you swords. never had a, a, a like a thumbtack fall? You think you put it in the cork board, but it didn't. And then you hear the little ding because it fall. And, and you then you have to, a small then, heart attack. <laughs> yeah, where did it go? Because you're, oh, you know, you're, because you, you, you know, you're barefoot, and it's you're like, a, it's like the, it's like the floor is lava. So you're like, oh crap! You're you're over here, like on the couch, like you're little, and you're like, where is it? And you never find it. No, until three weeks later. Yep. In your foot. <laughs> that, or my, or that or you see my dog sniffing. I'm like, oh, no. Don't eat that. My dog almost ate a damn toothpick the other day. I was so mad. I was like, because my cat knocked it off the, the, uh-huh. the table. And all I see is. Are my, you watching this happening? Well, I heard something fall over. Oh, and I was like. You heard the toothpick? I heard the the little casing of toothpicks. The little thing where, you know, you can get. The a, whole thing. Yeah, I the see. whole I thing. You heard, I heard it you fall You heard off. a toothpick <laughs> fall. I'm like, what kind of evil I, ears? I'm half deaf already. You know, <laughs> I can't hear that. <laughs> Um, I heard that fall, and I was like, "What the heck was that?" I looked at my dog; he's just sniffing some. I started licking something. I was like, "What do you have?" He took it, ran, and I oh, was he like, knew. Is, he, he, knew he was caught." He was he like, helped. "No, I want this." I was like, "What is it?" I opened his mouth. Toothpick. I'm like, "Ooh, Ooh. that's scary." That was yeah, it's sharp. Yeah, I'm gonna hurt him. And mm-hmm. they're little dogs, so yeah, that thing would have destroyed him probably. Yeah, so I'm glad I caught it. <laughs> Damn cat, stupid dog. If you blame the cat, you probably well, blame the, cat the dog the, that ate it. Well, the cat knocked it off the table. It, the she, dog should know not to see, eat the tooth. My cat, that it's, she's the one that does the thing where she stares at you and starts tipping something over while as she stares. watching at you. Yep. Like, what are you gonna do about it? Yep. Nothing. Yep. <laughs> anyway, uh, back to what is this? That's right, a gaming podcast. Yeah, it's state <laughs> of play. Where, like, I, it's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be cool. Yep. Yeah, moving on. Games radar. By mm. an Austin Wood. Zombies are appearing in Red Dead Online. Could be teasing Undead Nightmare 2. Ooh. I need, to go, back. I need to go back to Red Dead too. This week's Red Dead Online patch notes see told the first legendary bounty and a new mark for collectors to pursue. But they name no mention of the undead. Yet that's exactly what players are finding in the West. Gruesome, wrinkly, glowy-eyed zombies are pe- uh, have oh, appeared whoa, I see. in Red Dead Online. And players have not aren't entirely sure what to make of them. However, the most optimistic fans suspect that this could be a tease for Undead Nightmare 2, a spiritual selection to the zombie DLC for the original Red Dead Redemption. Cool. Excited. This won't be Undead Nightmare 2. This will be a, an expansion for the online that's oh, free, no, just yeah, like yeah. all the I, other Yeah, GTA I think it'll just be an online expansion. Like It's going to be like, like now, Undead, I, Undead I would Nightmare. I prefer Undead Nightmare 2, no, but yeah. we're not getting that. No, I think it's going to be like that, but it's just going to be like an event that's happening online. Yeah, for sure. Um, it'll probably be like mode. Maybe even the open. It, it'll be awesome if the whole world is changed. Oh, that'd be and cool. So we're like, well, as you're around, yep, as you're, like everything awesome. is like just weird, and you're, you're just writing your. Uh, I'd play that. It's like Days Gone, but Red Dead style. Yeah, yeah, just but like the it's never the freakers. It's normal yeah. zombies because freakers are kind of terrifying because they just just run at you with the hordes. Freakers are zombies. Always. Right. No, they're not. That's a he whole discussion. Like it that, when I say that, that's a whole discussion because, <laughs> fr- uh, yeah, freakers to me are not zombies. Alex, that wraps up the news for this week. Uh, no, no more news. No more news of note. There was a few things. Mm. Um, Gears Five beat Fortnite on Twitch, which was very that's interesting. crazy. So it surpassed Twitch on the full running scope of actual concurrence and if you guys want to listen to us you know talk about our spoiler cast of you know gears 5 just continue search it just search after search it up it'll all be live all at the same time yep so if you're listening to this we got a spoiler cast and if you like gears 5 you'll love two dudes who liked gears 5 talk about yeah because we're gonna we're gonna go (laughs) in depth i got easter eggs fam yeah i'm actually gonna get a a little review roundup ready for you guys um we love i love uh, going over the reviews and talking over what we think uh um is going down so i want to talk about legend of zelda Link's awakening alex are you excited for this specific title i am because i've never actually i've 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 not i'm not gonna say i've never played Link's awakening i started it and i maybe gave it an hour so you started this game i wasn't expecting you started this game you know this is like the the original game boy yeah no the original i yeah i started it Mm mm-hmm never went past that first hour just because i I think at the time i didn't i was i didn't care too much for it now i just i mean you know i've played 
uh, Link Between Worlds. I played Breath of the Wild. I play. I mean, I've played a a, a, couple, a good bit of them. Um, that I understand it more now. I want to try this one, and I like the whole new uh, art to it. it looks fun. Uh, the art style looks yeah, it amazing. Looks, yeah, yeah, amazing. Oh, amazing. Yeah, hey, I was gonna say what's amazing. wrong with you. <laughs> I'm having a stroke. Go back, Alex, go back to school. So, I wanted to just go over all the scores it's getting right now. Okay. Um, and GameSpot has a great review roundup, actually. I did not know this. I was actually going to do all this myself. And, of course, someone with more talent than me already did it. Well, look at uh, that. So GameSpot may- gave him an 8 out of 10. Quote, if you haven't touched a classic Zelda game in a while, Link's Awakening will almost instantly trans- transport you back to the 90s. Look at it's you. simple in many ways, but the orchestrated journey still conveys a sense of adventure. And this new version is, without a question, the best way to experience it. Forbes gave it a 10 out of 10. Whoa. Overall, this is an excellent remake of the already flo- uh, f- uh, faultless Zelda game. Please. If you never yeah. played the Game Boy original, then you absolutely need to pick this up. Heck yeah. If you like me, you grew up playing the game, then there is a lot of new content to keep you busy. Awesome. US Gamer gave it a 5 out of 5. The Legend of Zelda League Awakening remake improves most of the flaws from the original game while maintaining or enhancing everything that makes Link's Game Boy Adventure a classic. Game Informer gave it a 9 out of 10. This remake beautifully captures the essence of the Game Boy original. Kotaku is unscored as of recording. Um, but you say they say, you may recall that two years ago, Nintendo released The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, an all-time great that revitalized the iconic series. The company's latest Zelda game is so radically different they basically feel like different games. Sorry, different genres. But when taken together, they help explain what makes The Legend of Zelda so special. On one end of the spectrum, that there's a vast sense of polished, beautiful, open world full of strange places to explore. On the other, there's a density of island packed with secrets if the two games have one thing in common the, uh, and offer one reason to keep playing Zelda all these years later. It's this. They both make it feel pretty darn incredible to swing a sword. That's over on Jason Schwarter. Question. Did the original one have the Chain Chomps in it too? Yes. They all had callbacks to the Mario series. Chain Chomps. Um, so like all the Zeldas or this one? No, no. Just this one. Sorry. Okay. Uh, Is that the question? You're yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I was going to say, I, when, I, when I first saw the trailer for the remaster, I didn't know there was Chain Chomps in it. Yeah. And I saw them and I was chops. like, oh, that's cool. That's new. But apparently not. Gumbo? Go- the Goombas? The Goombas, thank you. Jeez, yep. I was like, what are the Goombas? I, I want to say Gumbo. Gumbo is Gumbo? so good. I'm, I'm, I want some right now. I man. want some Gumbo. I'll talk to my dad and yep. beg him to make us. My, my wife was saying she wants to make some jambalaya this uh, mm-hmm. this week or next week. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm so down. I'll take some. Make my, make extra. You got to come over, man. Um, and um, uh, Piranha Plants are also in the game. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. yeah. So they, they have a bunch of little callbacks like that. I wonder if little Mario himself is going to pop up. I don't no. know. One of the dungeons no, or won't. something. No, he won't. He has better things to do, like. Saving Not peach. saving peach. Or not saving peach. Or eating cake. Peach makes him cake a lot. Yeah? Yeah. Maybe that's why he's fat. Wow. I'm fat too, man. <laughs> I'm fat, I can say I ate, it. I ate some cake last the other day, man, and I just... I don't eat cake, but I've been wanting that was some good. cake, man. That was good? That, hey, I'm getting those those sympathy cravings. You keep pulling the, the table closer and closer to you it, well, while I'm getting further and further <laughs> away from it. It's because I'm put my el- I'm laying on it, so my elbows are pushing it, and I I'm can, just saying. And you I can think tell about because me I have this. While. Well, because I have this. Line. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening to these <laughs> stupid gaming podcast. We're not. We're done. gonna go have a marital <laughs> spout. Thank you so much for listening. If you like our content, please support us over on YouTube.com. Uh, we upload every Friday. Mm. Um, that is our weekly podcast, and we have little interstitials like spoiler cast of relevant games that we love. Uh, coming out randomly and we have of course our Patreon over on patreon.com slash easy achievers you give us a buck you get a bunch of uh, exclusives you give us five bucks you get everything early um, that helps us uh, support us makes it a little bit bigger uh, let's get Alex a new laptop that's not slowly falling apart before please. our eyes <laughs> please I need a new one <laughs> remember if you give us 50 or a hundred dollars we don't know how much a Chun-Li I'll <laughs> Chun-Li, I'll Chun-Li, Chun-Li the wear, heck out of this place we will wear the Chun-Li I will outfit. get my big thighs <laughs> Through that skirt. (laughs) (laughs) If you want to see that monstrosity happen, help us out, please. (laughs) Again, if you're on YouTube, grab your mouse, scroll to the top left corner, and throw, click subscribe, (laughs) click subscribe, then throw it across the room, and then you are now subscribed to us. Thank you so much for listening. I could just see somebody grabbing it, throw it. The computer goes flying with, and they were like. And then now he sent what? me a tweet. He's like, "You owe me a computer. I'll find where you live." And I'm like, "Oh God! Now I have another one chasing me." Really, really quick thing. If anybody likes the CW crossover things with oh Super God. Arrow, Super Girl, and all that stuff, you can't Tom, hold it in. Nope, I have to. <laughs> Tom Worling is joining it as 
his former self, Clark Kent. That's awesome. I can't That's wait. That's awesome. I can't wait. More on that in our Patreon exclusive. Again, thank you so much for listening. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Wink, wink. Bye-bye. I'm winking at you. Wink, oh, my wink. God.